Welcome to Become Famous Podcast, the ultimate destination for achieving fame in your industry. Join us for discussions as we uncover the strategies and secrets to becoming known, navigating cancel culture, and staying authentic. Stay tuned because here at Become Famous, the journey to fame begins now. Welcome to the Become Famous Podcast. I'm so excited we are doing this public figure series. What do you have to do? What strategies do you have to do now in the fame economy? As we've talked about here is in the fame revolution, there's a whole different way of getting yourself out there. You need to be visible. You need to be authentic. You need to become famous. And in all of that, as a public figure, you can't do it all yourself. You need a team. And so the team member that we are going to talk about today is the voice writer. And the person that came up with the word that has the voice writer association is Lisa Duncan. Welcome, Lisa. Tell us in one sentence, what does the team member of the voice writer do for the public figure? Hi there. Well, the voice writer is meant to help you get your voice and your message out into the world. They help you get it honed down to what you want it, and spread the word. So it's like the old-fashioned political speechwriter, in a sense, because Very speechwriters similar. are the ones. Very similar, it, which is totally accepted in the political world. Everybody knows that the politicians are saying what they mean, but they're not necessarily the ones that are writing their words. So it's the eloquence and the message that is coming from you and from your heart and from everything that you believe, but you've got some help in getting it to sound exactly right. Exactly. And I think that is so important for us to understand in today. Now that fame has been democratized, we all need to think about ourselves as that political leader, as an artist, as someone that's out there and you need a team. So we said we need a chief of staff and now we need a voice writer. So what is it, um, the ethical dilemma of the voice writer? I think, you know, there are some people who find it think that it's not ethical to use someone to help them get their message out and help them develop their message. But I have always said that smart people leverage the talents of others because we all need that. We all need someone. I don't do my own taxes. I don't have someone. I, I do have someone that comes in and takes care of the things that I'm just not great at because that is a smart thing to do. But why and, do you think, and I'm going to interrupt you there. Why do you think we have such a problem with the writing part, we are okay when politicians do, or okay when CEOs do it. What is it about the regular person? Is it because they're not admitting that they're a public figure? What is it about them thinking it's cheating? Well, I think people think that you should be able to think up your own words. And it, these people are still coming up with their own heartfelt message. This is absolutely still their beliefs and what they want to say they just maybe don't have the gift of stringing words together in a way that's as impactful as it could be and so if they work with someone who does have that gift what's wrong with that right it is like what i what i've said again about you know saying that the president of porsche doesn't do his own oil changes why would he that is the person with the vision there are other people that are working on getting it out there so really it is for all of us to think of ourselves as a company now. Yeah. We are a company. Yeah. So we're the owner of the company. We're the CEO of the company and we're the product. And what really I, I keep saying is you can't be all of those components. No, you'll drive yourself insane. You have to have people that are supporting you, that are giving you new ideas, that are giving you what ifs, that are saying you know, have you thought about it this way? Because that opens you up to not only new ideas, but it also gives you new perspectives. You don't have every perspective. You're one person. So you can, you can reach more people by having more, being more open to new, new ideas. Uh, that's so fascinating, isn't it? Um, uh, and, and, and it's like with me, when I started out my business, I did my own bookkeeping and I did my own taxes. But when I got a little bit bigger, I have an accountant. 
<laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. I'd be in huge trouble if I did that kind of stuff myself. Right. And so I think it is a mental shift for people to realize that this is like your new bookkeeper. You need a voice writer on your team. Yes, you do. It's. I can't tell you how many times I've been told, like, I never would have done that. I never would have said it that way. But it's just a twist on something they were already saying. And it's something that just made it more clear. And it made the audience connect with it more strongly, which is what it's all about. Right. No, I think uh, I think you're absolutely correct. Um, so and we could talk about the process with my book. Yeah. The fame uh, revolution, uh, which you were my voice writer. And what I liked about it was I think the talent of a voice writer as opposed to a ghost writer. It'd be great for you to compare the notes because I do believe there's a big difference. I think the voice writer is much more attuned to my voice. I think a lot of times ghost writers end up creating their own tone or uh, I don't know what you think about that. I, You know, I think... Many ghostwriters are different um, from one another. I think some of them have their own style, their own tone. Um, but what I was focusing on, because you were writing the book and I was coming in and going, you know, what if you added this and I can write this section for you, um, was keeping it all in your voice. And and then the other part that I think that, that voice writers do is, I would say, oh my gosh, I just thought of this quote that I remember, and you could use this, and this would slot in beautifully here. And here's an example that is something from, maybe something I remember from junior high or something. You know, just things that aren't your your experience necessarily, but they fit in perfectly, and you understand them, and they connect with you. So that's another little thing that I don't think ghostwriters do. No, well, I, do. I, I, I think what I what I liked about it, and I think... But probably because of my experience in politics, you're kind of taking on this the thing that I did when I was a speechwriter for for political leaders is that you are listening to their voice, you're listening to their interests, and you're finding quotes and things. You are you're an extension of their brain, so to speak. You're an extension of them, and you're helping them as one of the employees of the company of the politician. So it's like Torrent Inc. had Lisa Duncan as a voice writer. Right now, I've got Christina, who's helping me out with my social media. And then I have Shovik, who's helping me out with my podcast. Now, technically, I could do it all by myself, but when would I have time to do my business? Exactly. There's too many pieces to do it all yourself. You could do your social media, but again, then where does the business come from? What business is there? Right. <laughs> if you're constantly chasing after social media or articles that or blogs you want to write there's just not enough time to do all the pieces that are involved in running a business now and i think there's a fallacy and i think this is what's tough when you have those um big entrepreneurial gurus talking oh i do this i do that they don't do it themselves they have a team mm -hmm. and i think um that false perception because we have this like familiarity with our celebrity entrepreneurs or celebrity leaders oh i'm just doing this by myself as a solo you're a solo person that's that's actually bringing on people to help you uh, maybe you don't have a full staff but you have contractors you have certain components that are helping you i i don't see everyone doing everything by themselves and i don't think you can really scale the business even as a solo entrepreneur oh you'll burn out you'll burn out and i remember years ago and i wasn't really even into this but i remember people talking about martha stewart and her showing you these three steps to creating something fantastic a wreath the holiday wreath or something but she also has this league of assistants that are going out and sourcing all the materials and you know putting them together beautifully so she can put this simple thing together but it's hours and hours of other people's work before she even gets to that so it's you know it, it made us all feel so inadequate because we didn't have 
this gorgeous craft table at our disposal. But she had all of these people helping her. It's funny you say that. I'll never forget. I had this great party called Jazz Apples and Cheese. And so I made these apple molasses cookies for Martha Stewart. I think it was Martha Stewart, mm-hmm. one of those Martha-esque people. Oh, it's simple. And when I went through it, it took me three hours. And the cookies taste absolutely terrible. And no one ate them. Oh, no. <laughs> Uh, and, you know, the other thing I can say, and especially if we're talking about entrepreneurial women, which I know we're not strictly talking about women, but we multitask like crazy, which is an addiction. I believe that strongly. And if you ever think about it this way, a woman invented the cordless phone. That means she had to do a million things at once. It's just what we're trying to do. And we need to maybe scale back on that a little and ask for some help and look for the people who already are good at the things that we're trying to do while we're doing the other things we're good at. It's worth it. Yeah, isn't that interesting? So um, what are the, so like for someone that's going to be looking for a voice writer, that's a new concept, but you can still find a voice writer in the various content creators that are out there. What are the criterias? And maybe we can put in the show notes just like a little criteria sheet that you've created. Uh, what are some of the criterias that you believe a someone like me is going to look for a voice writer? Uh, The top two, I would say you need a listener. You need someone who really listens to you Um, and not in a, I just hear what you're saying, but they, they listen with kind of a hmm about them because it means they're really processing what you're saying and, and they're coming up with spinoff thoughts. Um, And, and the second spot, the second thing would be creativity because they need to take what you're saying and help you develop it. I think you're going to want to understand their taste a little bit. Um, and because you don't want somebody that's going to go so far off the mark from where you would ever go. And um, flexibility, adaptability, very important. Those are, I mean, I could probably go on and on, but those are the ones that I think are the, the top ones if you look at uh, samples of what they write, look for the diversity in it, diversity of subjects, diversity of styles. Um, but could it be, uh, could it be that like, so say if I was going to search for someone that I would maybe give either a, I give them assignment or I test them, but really for me to set up the criteria that you need to listen and you need to, you need to amplify my voice. It's kind of like what you do with chat. I will do now in chat when I have to write an email, I go, and now now the chat GPT knows me well enough, I say, write an email that sounds like me. So first write an email that's very formal, and then I go, hey, I want it to sound like me. It doesn't completely sound like me, but it gets to be a little bit more of my voice. But it's almost like that's mm-hmm. where a voice writer, how do you train them? To be more you have to put some time in too um it isn't like chat where you can just go here do this you know you have to put your time in you have to spend some time with them um give them things that sound like you that have your message and it's it's like anything else if you want somebody to do good work for you you've got to put in a little time with them and give them what's important to you give them the the voice you want to have out there the subjects you want to have out there make sure they know what's important to you um i think that's the biggest thing is putting in a little time and even if it's a little time ahead of time where you're preparing some things i want you to know that these are my top three priorities this is what i want to talk about this week um these are the things that i want to make sure you hit and even if you don't write a word as a public figure you need to give them that much to work on and you need to be a little available for them to ask questions. Mm. The people that I've done the worst job for are the people that aren't available. Because that's because it won't sound like them. So if, and if they're not invested in their own image, I can't do much with it. So them. really, if you're thinking about a time commitment, uh, and I, I kind of can see that is almost having like a weekly quick meeting or... Uh, that would probably be optimal, like a half an hour, just so they under they always have your really voice quick. in mind, and then uh, really yeah, quick. and then kind of help you 
create the newsletter, create the content, but really about mm-hmm. creating that understanding of the voice. Not only understanding the voice, understanding the audience too. That's another big part of it is I have one client, I meet with her 15 minutes to a half an hour a week and I write a series of emails to her audience and it's all in her voice, but I know who her audience is now. I know what kind of language to use. I know what not what kind of language not to use. I know what kind of imagery she likes. I know, you know verbal imagery. I, it's it took a little while to get to know her, but now I know exactly what to do. And I need I we need very little time to meet on a weekly basis, and I can I can be her. But um, in that, so like with my book, I I credit you as the voice writer and uh, you are helping me with certain sections. Uh, What I really appreciated was when I gave you the second draft where I was in the weeds of the fame history and didn't know how to how to look at it and you could co- technically say you were a developmental editor but i think you were more than that and that's when you came up with the word voice writer because you are not just developmentally editing which really means in terms layman terms is you're you're helping find out where sections are missing but as a developmental you don't go in and find the quotes or find the various things and i think that's where you came up with the word voice writer because you understood the what I was thinking. You've been part of my fame journey now for almost two and a half years uh, and was really there helping be like a mirror to me. And But you weren't a ghostwriter uh, because I wrote the book, but you came up with some fantastic uh, resources like the psychologist that was mentioning that we're not studying enough about fame, uh, some of the really interesting um people that I didn't find in my research, but you found. And so, and you weren't a research assistant because you were taking my voice and helping. And I thought it was such a rich experience. And I really hope that it takes on because at least for us that are writers to say we're voice writers, I think is a much better component than saying you're a ghostwriter. I, I prefer it for sure. And the one other little bit to it that I think is really important to remember is the expert has what we call, what anybody would call the curse of knowledge, which is they forget that everybody doesn't know what they know. And they forget that they can't explain it in jargon and things like that. So the, the voice writer comes in as sort of this b- blank slate that goes, hey, wait, I don't know what that means. You have to explain that because your reader doesn't know what it means either. So it's like that, hey, you got to check here. Um, That doesn't make sense to me. So explain it to me, I'll explain it to them, but like I'm a dum-dum, explain it to me like I'm five. And I will explain it, but you you can't just gloss over like everybody knows what that means. Because people truly forget that everybody doesn't already know. And that's a good thing to have somebody check you on that stuff. Oh, that's, and that's what you helped me. I mean, talk about the curse of knowledge. I was going like this and then, uh, and then you uh, were like, wait. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know what that is. No, and and then you have the, um, it's a trust issue too. You got to find someone that you trust to really, to, uh, and then have a confidentiality agreement in the, in the, in the bottom of it, but I do believe, um, like for, for instance, a lot of, uh, politicians will not give compliments to who their speechwriter is, but some will, like Ronald Reagan, openly Peggy Noon was the speechwriter there. So you have several people, like Obama was very, um, Favreau was his writer, but you didn't know what I liked about what, because there's something about when you're delegating your voice to someone, you don't want them to nitpick, I came up with that, 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 and that. And I thought that's where kind of Peggy right. Noonan goes a little bit wrong. What I like about the way Obama's folks were, and also John F. Kennedy, was you knew that they had these speechwriters, but you didn't know what they were writing because you're really being someone's voice, and I'm the one that's voicing it. I'm the one that's standing behind it. As a voice writer, you can write right. something that you don't necessarily believe in, right? So, I think that's I think that's an important distinction. Yeah, I think you can't be a voice writer and need to claim ownership of something specific 
I just, I think you got to put your ego aside in that respect. It's just, this person is the one standing behind. But you are getting credit. And I think that's the difference between a ghostwriter. And I don't think ghostwriters can survive the fame revolution because people need to know what you're doing. Uh, it's very important to be visible. And as a ghostwriter, you could say, I'm a ghostwriter, but I can't tell you what I wrote. Doesn't work. You're a voice, you're a voice writer that helps someone write the book and maybe can give certain sections to someone that's evaluating you as the voice writer that they want to take on. But I think in today's age, ghost writers are really not possible. I think it's getting harder. And I, the other thing is that the, the public figure that you're writing for can recommend you. Whereas somebody who's had a ghostwriter, they probably aren't going to tell anybody. No. And, and I think creating that culture of giving credit, like you give credit to a bookkeeper. <laughs> you <know>? right. <laughs> this is right. my tax account. They're this amazing. is my bookkeeper. <laughs> this is my voice writer. Period. I think that's the way you really need to think about it. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with you. I think it's a, it's a more open way of, of doing business and, and of being just being uh, um, authentic, which, you know, that's what I think you got to aim for as a public. So person. any lasting thoughts and ideas on, on, um, on the voice writer, and we're going to have a series and you're going to be joining me uh, on this topic of the public figure. Is there anything else that you want to, in this section, because we're going to, we're going to be talking about authenticity. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about champions and a lot of other parts that the public figure has. Um, I think I would just go back to the word I just used, authenticity. I think you need, as a public figure, to get yourself out there. And I think sometimes it's easier for someone else to help you tell your story or talk about who you are, because people tend to be a little reluctant sometimes uh, telling, talking about themselves. People get a little uncomfortable with that. I think that's something that a voice writer can be very instrumental in, and I think it's necessary because in the fame revolution, people need to be known. They need to be known for what they do, but they also, people need to trust you and know who you are and know that you are an authentic person with a real, relatable past, present, future. Um, and that's where a, a voice writer can help you get that story to the people. Fantastic. The people. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Become Famous Podcast. If you like what you heard, please subscribe, rate, and review our show. Your support helps us keep bringing you valuable insights on achieving fame in your industry. Keep shining and see you next time.